In this video, we're going to look at how to derive the formula for finding the volume of solids of revolution using integration. Suppose we have a region bounded by the function x is equal to f of y, the y-axis, the lines y is equal to a and y is equal to b as shown in the diagram. And we rotate this region about the y-axis, then we're going to be able to generate a solid revolution that looks like this. In order to find the volume of this solid, we can think of it as being made out of a series of very, very thin cylindrical disks going from A to B, so that if we're able to find the volume of each disk going from A to B and add them all up, we would then have the volume of the solid. Now recall that the volume of a cylinder is given by the formula V is equal to pi r squared h. Pi r squared is the area of the circular cross-sectional area of the cylinder, and h is the perpendicular height. We can apply this formula to finding the volume of each cylindrical disk, so that we have the volume of a cylindrical disk, which we're going to call delta v, is equal to pi times x squared times delta y. Now, the reason that we replace the variable r with x is because the radius of each cylindrical disk is given by the x value corresponding to the y value of the function at that point. The height h is replaced by delta y because delta y is that small increment along the y axis which represents the height of each disk. Then to find the volume of the solid, we simply take the summation of delta v going from y is equal to a to b, delta v gets replaced by the expression pi times x squared delta y, and we take the limit as delta y approaches zero. In other words, we make it the, this very, very thin so that we have a smooth surface, and all of this gets replaced by the integral operation so that we have the formula v is equal to pi times the integral going from a to b, of x squared dy. Because we're integrating with respect to y, we then need to make sure that we express x in terms of y so that our final formula is v is equal to pi times the integral going from a to b of f of y squared dy. The same idea can be applied to finding volumes of solids of revolution rotated about the x-axis. This time we've got a region bounded by the function y is equal to f of x, the x-axis, the lines x is equal to a and x is equal to b. If we rotate this region about the x-axis, we're going to form a solid that looks like this. This solid is made out of a series of very, very thin cylindrical disks, this time in the vertical orientation. If we're able to find the volume of each disk going from A to B and add them up, we would again have the volume of this solid. So recall that the volume of a cylinder is given by the formula V is equal to pi r squared times h. The volume of a cylindrical disk we can call it delta v, is given by pi times y squared times delta x. This time, the variable r gets replaced by y because the radius of each disk is given by the y value of the function at each different value of x. h gets replaced by delta x because delta x is that small increment along the x-axis which represents the height of each disk. Then to get the volume of the solid, we sum up all these delta v's going from x is equal to a to b. Delta v gets replaced by the expression pi times y squared times delta x. And again, we take the limit as delta x approaches zero. In other words, we make the thickness of each disk very, very thin with many, many of them so that we get a smooth surface. And again, all of this gets replaced by the integral operation so that we've got the formula v is equal to pi times the integral going from a to b of y squared times dx. 
But because when we do the integration with respect to dx, we need to make sure that y is expressed in terms of x. Hence, we replace y with f of x and we get the other formula. v is equal to pi times the integral going from a to b of f of x squared dx. Thanks for watching everyone. Now that we've derived the formula for finding volumes of solvents of revolution, in our next few videos, we're going to look at how to apply these formulae to work out the volumes for solids generated by rotating different functions. So make sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.